interesting things about this Broadway season is that the two most nominated shows are Hamilton and Shuffle Along, which feature big and almost entirely non-white casts. Additionally, there's Eclipse, the first Broadway production to be written, directed, and performed exclusively by black women, Color Purple, which centers around black actresses. The list goes on. What can Hollywood learn from Broadway? Because they're obviously having their own struggles with diversity at the moment. I so much. I mean, cl clearly like what you just talked about and just the casting, but even beyond th the diversity within the casting and, this, and, and the storytelling, just I think storytelling in general, I think Hollywood is in a, a major drought right now for actually capturing people's hearts and attentions and minds. It, it's sacrificing just talent over whatever sells tickets. <clears throat> I just think talent transcends anything else. And talent and, and drive and, and merit. I mean, I, I, I grew up thinking that the show business was a meritocracy. And it is not, no. um, and especially in Hollywood. And I think that now, especially in this, what people are calling the new golden age of theater, we're doing it right. People, no matter what they look like, have brought incredible stories to light, and people aren't going, yeah, it's good, but, but she's this, or but he's Broadway, that. Broadway has always done stuff yes. before. You know, the children's hour about lesbians, when they made the first movie, they were just good friends, you know. So Hollywood has always shied away from anything that was challenging in that, that way. And I guess now they've been called on the carpet, so they're, they're stepping up. Now we should know, you were in Excellent Casa Valentino, which was about trans issues before That's that right. was uh, being, now it's That's everywhere. Right. It was, so it was, yeah. But I think that, can I just make Please. a point there about that? I don't think anybody in Hollywood ever sat down and said, let's make a really great artistic picture. It's run by corporations, and movies are products, and uh, the product has to sell to the widest possible audience. And in order to do that, you have to shave off anything that's emotionally challenging or, or complex. Here's the thing that I've noticed, and I, I, I'd love to know how these other sh shows... When I look out at the, at the curtain call at the end, you're talking about diversity in terms of casting. I look at the audiences. And I don't see any diversity in the shows that I've been in. First of all, it costs a lot of money to go to Broadway. And you wonder about where the next wave of young writers is going to come from and, and young actors because the lure of television and films is, is, so, is so strong for obvious reasons. But I used to be a teacher uh, in Dublin and the kids asked me one day would I start a drama class. I knew nothing about it. I used to take them to the movies and the theater and we discuss it. And the difference between them in a drama class and in a conventional class was enormous because they discovered something that allowed them to express themselves. It was unselfconscious in the sense there was no career involved. But the power of drama to alter children's lives and people's lives is incredibly moving. And when I look out at those audiences, I think to myself, well, is there any way that Broadway can address the expense notion, the idea of maybe doing shorter runs so that actors can be more accommodated? And how do you produce diversity in Broadway audiences? Hamilton is one thing, but you can't get into that. <laughs> School of Rock. Like, isn't there a $25 ticket? Front row, or am I wrong? Ten dollar ticket. ticket. Ten dollar yeah. ticket. But they're still, they are difficult to get, right? I mean, yeah. it's the yes, lottery. they're very difficult. Get... If I could speak to it for a Please. second. I, I love the theater, and I love this moment that we're having right now. But I am not so fast to praise, uh, you know, I think what we're having is, is, a, is a rare moment. I think what we really need to pay attention to is the next two seasons. Right. You know, uh, oftentimes for, for my career, um, I've watched, you know, sort of my white, my white counterparts, you know. I, I imagine, if you would with me, if, if, a, if a white actor was having a similar situation as, to, as, as I'm having right now in the show, the kind of success of the show, there might be three or four offers a week for the next shows that you're going to do. There are no shows for me to do. You're saying you haven't even, even with the success, you're not hearing a... Well, there's, just, there, there's just no roles. What, I, what, I, yeah. what I'm, there's just, you know, especially when you look at an Aaron Burr, you look at, you know, the, com the complexity, the humanity in this part, there's no parts for me to play, right? Unless we're talking about somebody's going to reimagine, somebody's going to let me do a She Loves Me or a Music Man, which, you know, the, we were talking about early. These are roles that were written for white actors. And so I don't say that to... You know, I'll take care of myself. We'll be fine. I'll go, do, <laughs> I'll go do music. I'll go do TV. I'll go do what I have to do. But 
I think what we're going to see, I hope what we're going to see is five, six years from now, the shows that this show has inspired. Mm -hmm. The show that the mm -hmm. writers, the, there's young mm -hmm. writers now that are being inspired by the show that are going to start writing today. But um, a, as far as diversity on Broadway, I'll be interested to see what the next two or three seasons yeah. look like yeah. because I don't hear a whole lot of stuff. 